this section I'd like to give a little bit of information about a new pest that we've been having problems with in Bermuda grass. And this new pest causes some real problems with the tip ends of the Bermuda grass especially in that the last two to three leaves of that Bermuda grass would look like it had been frosted. And actually what would happen is, is if you went into that crop and, and pulled out that top leaf or two, what you would see is that it would slip out of that sheath very easily and you would see obvious damage at the base of that uh, uh, affected leaves. And what's going on here is actually uh, an insect called the Bermuda grass stem maggot is down inside of that, that uh, stem. And that maggot is actually being laid by this fly. Uh, the Bermuda grass stem maggot fly and that fly will lay its eggs on the bottom side of that leaf and as that egg uh, hatches and the larvae develops it the larvae will move itself down inside of the stem and begin to go to that first node and do some major damage to the uh, to that node in the vascular tissue there. This stem boring maggot or the fly uh, has been damaging some real problems, uh, causing a lot of damage for us, uh, many of these fields in South Georgia, but it's now all over the state of Georgia as well as many other states as well. I've had reports as far north as Tennessee and North Carolina and as far west as um, Louisiana and Mississippi. We also see it all the way down into Florida as well as throughout uh, uh, the coastal region of the Atlantic Southeast. This is a picture or a set of pictures of the fly itself. Um, the one in the lower left hand corner is a little bit better with regard to the color of the, of the insect. But to give you some sense of the scope of, of the size of that uh, fly, you can see there in the middle, in the lower middle, the fly is there next to a, a dime. And you can see it's a very, very small fly, uh, but something that small is actually, if there's enough of them, causing a lot of damage. It's actually the larvae that you can see in the uh, upper third of the, uh, the right hand side of the slide uh, that's causing uh, the damage. And that larvae will burr itself down inside of the stem and actually uh, consume uh, the vascular tissue at that first node. Now there's been relatively little information about this insect. Uh, in fact, when we first started working on it, uh, the sum total of the scientific literature could be summarized basically on one page. But we've learned a lot about it in just a relatively short amount of time. Well, first of all, we know now that it, there are multiple generations within a given cutting. So you may have two to three generations of, of uh, stem maggots that could be doing damage in just w the time that it takes to grow one Bermuda grass hay crop. It also uh, definitely has a yield effect not so much of a quality effect, but definitely has a yield effect. Uh, we've seen yield reductions of 50% or more. Now, what we have seen, however, though, is that the thicker stem varieties, those that have a, a much thicker, robust stem, much wider leaf, seem to be much less preferred. So varieties like Tifton 85, um, Coast Cross 2, Tifton 68, and some of those tend to be much less uh, affected by this insect than the finer stem varieties like Alicia and to some degree Tifton 44 and Coastal and Russell and, and even Common. Now we also have found some success in trying to suppress these uh, insects as well. We don't have a really uh, full range of experiments to really show exactly uh, what level we should be targeting so we haven't really set an economic threshold yet but many cases our producers have noticed they either have it or they don't and if they do have it it's really causing them some substantial yields, uh, yield losses and so we've, we've come up with a, a technique to at least suppress it I think that is relatively cost effective uh, it does require two applications though. The first application needs to be applied within about a week or so of that, uh, that cutting so as soon as the hay has been cut off uh, you come back about a week or so later and come in with a, a, a synthetic pyrethroid or some other insecticide, uh, whatever the cheapest insecticide that you can find uh, for the most part is going to be able to kill this fly uh, if it's a reputable product. 
Uh, so it can be done very, very inexpensively, but it actually requires a second application. Remember I said we've got multiple generations going on here, so we actually need to uh, apply this a second time so that we ensure that we get those multiple generations under control and suppressed. So that second application needs to be about 14 to 21 days after the cutting or about a week to two weeks after you uh, sprayed the first time. With doing that, we've seen a pretty substantial decrease in, in the population and the damage that's been occurring. Now we're continuing to do some research on this and I hope that we have some additional answers for you as we go forward. But as of right now, this is what we know about this insect. I think we are learning more and more about this every year. And I think uh, we, we really have a handle now on how to uh, suppress that and keep it from causing some major problems for us. The other thing I would like to point out is, is that many times we're spraying in the summer months anyway for fall armyworm control. And we may be able to uh, basically make those applications uh, during the time of year where we would be needing to apply for fall armyworm control anyway. So if that's the case, we may also want to add into the tank mix something like a Demlin or one of the other products that have a little bit more residual to control uh, the fall armyworm as well as to control the, uh, the fly itself. Now one of the issues that I want to bring to everyone's mind just as a, a, to close out this section is that oftentimes we see a lot of disease problems in connection with and at the same time with the stem bore damage. And when you get those two together, that's when we really start having a tremendous amount of yield loss. And so I'll just be encouraging you to go out and, and be looking at your fields uh, for both stem diseases as well as the stem bore damage. I hope that's helped you uh, understand a little bit better this insect problem. Uh, for more information about this, I would encourage you to check us out online at uh, georgiaforages.com.